Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Women's Maximum Fitness Podcast. Today, I'm super excited to have IFBB Pro, Figure Pro, Carlin Crouch with me today. And um, she's going to tell us a little bit about herself, her figure road to the pro journey, and working with a company called New Fit, which I'm really excited for people who don't know about that to hear about. And um, maybe we can get somebody in Michigan to <laughs> get that product because I would love to get my hands on one. But anyways, Carlin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm always curious about people's athletic background. So go ahead and start from the very beginning. Sure. <laughs> um, I mean, I've always been an athlete. Um, I was in dance when I was little. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, I did all sorts of sports from track to volleyball, okay. um, basketball. I kind of like did it all. Yeah. And then um, after college, I kind of flipped. A lot of people get into the bodybuilding right around the college age. I got started very late. Yeah. I didn't my first competition until I was 28. How old are you now? 36. Okay. But you're like, this is like prime age. That's a really it great is. age to be. Yeah. So 30s maybe. are good for women and, and muscle. So yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. in my prime for that, <laughs> especially with the division I ended up in. Yeah. But a lot of girls get started so young, you know, you hear the early twenties and yeah, it just wasn't me. Um, I was previously married and that's actually what got me into the gym was I went through a divorce and my happy place was the gym. So yeah. I spent my time there and I actually had someone ask me if I ever started, if I ever thought about competing and I was like, competing in what? <laughs> And they showed me a picture and I was just like, hmm. I was like, no, I was like, I never thought about it. And they're like, you should look into it. So I like Googled like bikini com competitions because of course I was smaller then. So how much were you, like, what was your training like when you first got into it? Where did you get that information from how to go into the gym? I mean, were you a cardio person or did you immediately go to the weights? I did both. I knew the weights and I, but I never pushed myself. I just do machines, sure. um, not not much bump, uh, dumbbell work or barbell work. I just, yeah, you know, it was, I was more kind of your just average gym goer. <laughs> but you were getting results or did you have a goal in mind? Or you just, it was sort of a therapy for you because it was just therapy. Yeah. yeah. At that time, especially. <laughs> yeah. That's super relatable. That's how I got into bodybuilding, um, too, was during my divorce it was a nice escape. <laughs> it was. I mean, my happy place was the gym. I much rather was, would have been there than at home. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I stumbled upon a Canadian pro looking at pictures and I can't remember her name for the life of me, okay. but um, I looked at her. I was like, I want to look like that. She was bikini. And um, I just started training and compete. And I uh, got on with a coach that was out of the Midwest there and she did a bunch of girls um in bikini she had a whole team and stuff and I did my first bikini show I placed fifth which I was shocked <laughs> nice and you were where are you located where are you located at the time is this in I Texas? was in Texas in San Antonio oh. okay. and I took a year off after that and I did I got into CrossFit okay and then, so CrossFit put too much muscle on me and started my shoulders. And when I tried to do bikini again, okay. um, I was with the same coach and they told me my shoulders were too big. So I either needed to push to figure or pull down my muscle. Okay. So I, um, I took a little bit of time off. Um, I had some stuff going on with my hormones at the time. Okay. And was this from your, from competing or? We think so. Um, I used to also be on birth control and I had come off of that okay. uh, years ago, okay. but um, I never paid attention to my blood work. I never got my hormones checked. I never was never knew to do that. You know, my previous coach never checked blood work. 
Well, and it's important for people to first get a baseline at some point, right. Right? because like I know in years past, I've had my hormones checked too. My testosterone is a little bit low. Like I think women is, it's like 0.8 to 1.6 or something is what the you're free, testing. the free test. You're thinking. Yeah. yeah. And mine is like point was like 0.7. So just below, but um, I mean, I've talked to John about this before too. I, I don't know if it's always been that way because I've never had a baseline test when right. I was younger. So we never, you don't know, you just don't know. But so, I was on birth control since I was like 16 or something and I came off at 30. Oh, wow. So, I mean, we don't know the effects, but suppressing my own ability to make hormones for 15 years, yeah. you know, it's like yeah. probably. I was messed up when I came off of it and getting into competing just has exacerbated it. So, yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people don't realize that either, how much, um, just the dieting, the extreme dieting really does affect your hormones, um, which right. is why breaks people doing show after show after show. It's why they end up having, you know, thyroid issues and, uh-huh. um, all that other stuff. You just run your body right into the ground. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we do we push our bodies really, really hard. Yeah. But when I ended up getting on with John, it's interesting. Just last week, it was like officially five years I've been with John Jewett as my coach. Yeah. And um, hard to believe it's been five years. So almost my entire time competing, almost. Yeah. Um, but he's taken me through all of my figure, like time that I, he was the first one to convince me to go figure. Yeah. So, um, so how did you find John? Um, I think this is an important thing too, because people don't always know how to find a good coach. So how, how did you find John? Um, my friend, Cassie, um, she actually had been with John, um, and she used to compete. She doesn't compete anymore. I've met her and Christina at my first bikini show. Yeah, Christina Bittner. Yeah. And, Kate. <laughs> Kate. and um, they were really good friends. And Cassie was with John. And Cassie had always preached how good he was, how knowledgeable he was, how, you know, he was, he has his master's in nutrition. At the time, he was on with a hospital. He was a clinical dietitian there. Yeah. So he, you know, I mean, I was just like, so he knows diet on the medical side. Sure. And his passion is bodybuilding and he knows how to coach. I mean, it was just like, like he knew what he was doing. He's not going to give someone these cookie cutter diets, right. not knowing what to give them nutrient wise, you know. Right. And he so, does know how to read blood work, which isn't, right. I mean, there's, there's legalities behind that, but it is important if you have a coach, if they can um, look at what you've gotten done and say, especially as a bodybuilder, because a doctor is going to look at your blood work and think elevated liver levels are right. crazy. Yeah, and and your blood also break down. You know, I'm, I'm as an athlete, there's yeah. one doctor I've had that knew that that was why my liver was elevated and they're not, it's not high. It's just on the high end or maybe like five or 10 above, you know, the recommended range. It's, it's funny. Not- it's funny because I re- I've had different times where they've done blood work and my there's been times where I've gone through phases where I haven't been able to train nearly as much and then my you know my creatinine is normal and I'm like oh I'm really not training because it's like right. not 1600 or something you know yeah yeah, yeah. so anyway so I got on with yeah I um I got on with John and he's the one that it was right after I was in prep with him and we were going to do a bikini show. And it was right after he had done Dallas Europa and qualified for nationals to get his pro card. Okay. And so this was 2016, four, four years ago. Yeah. It, I think it's 2016. Yeah. 2016. And we just gotten, I, we, I went to Dallas to watch him. And that next check-in, he was like, do me a favor, Carlin. And I think after him seeing me in person too, kind of made him think. Um, But he was like, do me a favor. He was like, just try to pose figure and send them to me. Mind you, I had no idea how to pose figure. 
<laughs> and he sent me, I remember, a front and back of Nicole Wilkins, who I um, admire. Oh, so my God. Much. Yeah. She's still like the epitome when I put, you know, it's the picture of, is it, was it 2012, thir 12, 13, or 14? It's one of those where she just walked out and it was like, it was the last time she won, I think. Yeah. My picture of, it was like, I hate to use this term, but it was like Barbie on steroids. She just was like <laughs> so gorgeous, but like. And that was why. That. Yeah. Yes. I was like, she keeps her femininity. Yeah, for sure. She never, ever, ever pushed like looking too, you know, masculine. Yeah. And that was always my fear and why I was so afraid to step out of bikini and go to a different division is I wanted to keep my femininity. I never, ever, ever wanted to start to look masculine. Right. And I was very upfront with John about that. And I let him know right off the bat, you know, I have no desire to change the way I look and to start looking more masculine. Yeah. I want to keep my femininity. That's extremely important to me. And he understood. Yeah. He's, um, he is so great about that too. And just, I know that he's done, he's done a lot of corrective work with women who've yeah. had, um, you know, been from coaches who have maybe pushed the envelope with, right. um, with drug use and he's very conservative and not even, I mean, even if somebody were to say like, I'm willing to push, like he knows like certain drugs, women just shouldn't be taking. And I don't think that he would work with somebody if they wanted to push something to that level. He just, you know, we all have a conscience about that. Um, right. And, um, yeah. He's always been really good about that. Yeah. And look at you, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> your, little, your little sweet face. <laughs> so that mission was accomplished. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I sent him those pics and he was like, your body's just made for figure. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, and I was like 16 weeks out, I think at the time. And he was like, if you want to move to figure this show, now's the time to do it because we still have time. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So, you know, I mean, of course I took a little bit to make the decision, but yeah. I talked to Christina and, you know, he talked to Roland at Muscle Factory and was just like, even Roland thinks, you know, that you're just, you're more built in that athletic build. And we think you'll do a lot better in figure. So do Girl, you, I, I have a question. Did you, uh, so what do you think is more difficult, the bikini posing or the figure posing? Because bikini. really? <laughs> I hated bikini posing. It's so subjective. Yeah. It's like you could do it this way or you could do it this way. And granted, yeah. it was difficult to learn how to pull out your lats. But once you get it, yeah, hitting mandatories is so much easier. <laughs> and I don't know, than the subjective figure pose or the subjective bikini poses. And it's just, yeah, I never felt comfortable on stage as a bikini competitor. And the first time I walked out on stage as a figure competitor, I felt like I was at home. I thought I walked out with so much more confidence. And I mean, a lot of it, I also think has to do with the package I brought. John brought me in very well. Yeah. And so it was a combination of putting the right coach with the right division for yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, um, and that, but the, also the reward like made up for it because for the first time ever, I, could, I placed first in novice and first in open in my very first figure show. Yeah. I never won an overall. So in my second figure show, I did a national show and I did junior Nats. Yeah. I jumped right in just because I wanted to see where I fell nationally. Yeah. And I got second call outs. I think I placed 10th. And then we jumped into another regional show to requalify. This was in 2017. What I placed first. And then in 2018, we just dropped off into um, off season. And in 2018, we decided I'd only prep for a national show. And so I just did USAs and I took first and got my pro card. What was, what was the feedback from junior nationals when you got second call outs? What did the judges say? Thicker back mm. and, uh, more quad development, gluten ham. Okay. Kind of everything. Okay, just bigger. Just <laughs> yeah. So, and I definitely made those improvements. Like you look at my side by side and it was only a year. Yeah. But I also was using the newbie at that time too. Okay. We'll get into that later, but it yeah. was interesting to see the difference and like even my waist looked better my my abs looked better i got the depth on my back that i needed um but my biggest critique after usa's 
they didn't really say anything about my back. It was my glutes and hands still. Yeah. So that's a stubborn part for me. (laughs) Well, I think you're more upper body dominant, which makes you great for figure, but, um, yeah, you got to have that, that balance, that symmetry going on. This whole Um, off season, we've really been targeting my lower body, which off season now has been two years. (laughs) So I was going to ask you that. So what happened during the pandemic for you? Um, you were still out, were you still in Texas or had you moved? I, <laughs> so I moved, I had moved May of 19. So we were going to do my pro debut in 19, okay. but after not knowing what I was going to do, I knew my lease was up in May and I didn't want to stay in Austin and I didn't know I was going to move to Vegas at the time, but okay. John was just like, Well, he was like, why don't we hold off and see, you know, my, we tried to start prep, not really a show in mind, but just starting prep. My body wasn't responding at all. Yeah. And John's like, Carlin, I'm not going to do this to you. Your body's fighting you. Yeah. He's like, so there's a reason for this. He's like, I don't want to know what you would be, you know, X weeks out from a show. If you're not pulling down when we're pulling calories and upping cardio right now. Were you very stressed or was, how long was it since you had competed? Had you not had a break from competing? I had, um, so I had stopped. I mean, after this was, this was January of 2019. So I had about six months off, which is not that long, but long enough. Yeah. Um, and I just, I think I was stressed because my body, I didn't really know what was going to be happening come May. And so I think that was stress that I didn't really think about. Sure. But, but was affecting me. Yeah. And um, I ended up have, deciding to move out of Austin May of that year and um, take the leap and move to Vegas and start my own business. Have so you been in Texas your whole life? No, I, my dad was in the military okay. and we moved around. So I moved around as a kid. I lived in, I was born in San Antonio, but then we moved to Alaska, Arizona, South Dakota, and then back to Texas. Okay. So I was there for a while. Okay. Okay. What were you doing for work at, oh, you were, so what were you doing for work then um, when you were in Texas? Um, Well, I actually came out to UNLV for college and I graduated with a degree in hotel administration with a major in hospitality management. Okay. And I did hotels for like, I sold hotel rooms and meeting space to corporations for big events and meetings and stuff. Okay. And I did that for about eight or nine years after college. Okay. And, um, I was with, when I moved to Austin, I was with the Hilton Austin. So I just wasn't happy because I was competing then too. And competing was starting to become a real passion of mine. I love doing it. Okay. And I was hating being at work for 50 hours a week. You know, it was just like draining me so it was and long- chasing numbers. And stressful. It was a stressful job too. Okay. Okay. And because you have goals and if you don't meet your goals, you don't get bonuses. And then you're also very corporate. Like it was very kind of like a corporate job. Yeah. So I, at the time I had discovered new fit there in Austin and I had gone to them for rehab because when I did my first figure show, we noticed an imbalance slightly in my left glute and my right quad. Okay. And so when I went to new fit, we found out my left glute was shut down and my right VMO was shut down. Okay. What so was there a, like a pelvic twist going on or what? I do have a pelvic twist um, that could be derived from that. Also in CrossFit, I injured my SI joint. So okay. that could have it helped with the injury too, or the imbalance. So what happened with CrossFit? What was that just, how long were you doing that? And then what made you just decide it wasn't? I did it for almost a year and actually the injury because I hurt my back really bad and I was like I can't do this anymore (laughs) it was to the point my SI joint injury was so bad I was lived on the second floor of an apartment complex I would literally crawled up my stairs one day because I couldn't stand and walk up my stairs okay I was like okay I think (laughs) I'm just gonna go back to bodybuilding Thinking I I would injure myself and this year I've dealt with more injuries than I care to even list. So minor, of course, but yeah, but every little tweak is a domino effect because if you don't let that heal, 
something. And once you injure something, it's really always just when's that gonna go again or when is it like my body holding on to this one spot so something else. I yeah. I can't I think that's the thing like this past year too is had it's been past two years. Mm, no, since 2017 when I when I almost competed, I've had numerous injuries and now it's like it's just a battle, which is what made me so interested in learning more about new fit. I know John and Renee actually bought one of the machines and I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I wish I had an extra 20 grand so I could. <laughs> I'm still paying on mine. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. I didn't have the money laying around. So <laughs> I set up payments, but those payments are more than my car payment, so. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyways, injury, I just was curious because I know a lot of people do CrossFit and I know, like I have friends that own a CrossFit, um, a friend of mine, through Instagram owns a CrossFit gym. And I know some people, it, it, it works out perfectly for them and they never get injured. I know yeah. it would be like, when I see people doing like- the younger the ones. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone I know that was my age or older that started, it didn't last very long because they injured themselves and they're out of it now. <laughs> yeah. I always imagine my shoulders getting pulled out of their sockets when I see people doing the over the double, whatever the pull-up things yeah. are. I was like, oh hell no, that would be <laughs> the death. That would be the death of me. But my friend Tara does it and she has these amazing videos on her Instagram when she was doing it when she was like pregnant and stuff. And I'm just like, this is like surreal watching this. She's like, she's like superhuman. So I'm not even gonna <laughs> try to compete with that. <laughs> so, anyways, so I was just curious what um how you flowed in and out of CrossFit and back to bodybuilding. So anyway, yeah, it was the injury. <laughs> yeah, it was the injury. So, all right. So during the, let's see, what were we talking about during the pandemic? What was oh, my, the move to, okay. Vegas. So I had moved in 2019 mm -hmm. and um, well, I guess we were talking about what I did. So I was, I was with Hilton yep. and then when I was rehabbing the, the glute in the VMO, I was really interested in the new fit and I was just like, they were barely tapping into like what it could do. And, um, I kept in contact with them and, you know, I was just like, they're saying that they wanted to grow more and I wanted out of the hospitality industry. So I was like, this aligns more with my passion with bodybuilding, you know, like helping people. Sure, so sure. I took a huge pay cut, left a salary job with benefits and, um, took an hourly job at the front desk at new fit in Austin so and started was new fit Austin, the core, like the original spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the creator, the founder of the device, um, has headquarters there. Okay. His name's Garrett Salpeter and, um, Say his name again, Garrett Salpeter. Okay. And he originally like created the, the newbie machine. And so I started in the front office there and then I eventually wanted to become a trainer. And um, the other head guy there was Rich Doherty and he's no longer with them anymore, but um, he helped train me and I moved from front desk to trainer. And then I learned the rehab side and I moved, I did, so I kind of did training and rehab at the end when I was right before I left. And I just, I love I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the training aspect of it, but because I train myself, I think it takes away from my passion for training. So I like the rehab side a lot better. And plus you actually like help people feel better sure. and people are injured. I mean, in one session you can walk away and they can be significant. They can, they, I shouldn't say they're healed, but they're feeling better from the injury than they were when they walked in. So awesome. just the knowing that you're making a difference is a lot more gratifying than just training someone or a desk job at the Hilton <laughs> chasing numbers. Hey, I mean, somebody has got to do every job. So I agree. I agree. I just, I had to do a spot for somebody at the Hilton, you know, yep. that would think of you. <laughs> Nothing against the hospitality industry. I mean, it's, it's, it was great while it lasted and it was, you know, the time that I had in it, I loved it. I've made a lot of great friends in it and connections, but yeah. it's my time to leave. <laughs> so, um, so when I was toying with leaving Austin, I talked to Garrett and 
because I had learned everything, you know, I knew front of the front of house, I knew, you know, training and the rehab side. And so I kind of knew it all. Yeah. And he was like, well, he's like, I just like, it's not in my heart to stay in Austin. I can't even go look for apartments. Like, I just, I don't want to stay here. You he's just- like, well, where are you thinking? And I was like, well, West coast, I thought about Arizona. Mm-hmm. Um, there are several machines though in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Not that I was set on moving new with new fit or with a device. And he was like, well, he's like, what about Vegas? And I was like, I thought about moving back to Vegas because he knew I had come here for college. And I loved it when I lived here for college. Okay. And he was like, you know, there's no machine in Vegas. Would you want to invest in a machine and take it out there and start your own? Yeah. And I'm a big Christian. And before this conversation, I prayed and I was like, I just, if this is meant to be, if this is what you like, help, like show me the path that you want me to be on you know, like help this conversation, make it clear to me. And when we talked about Vegas, I just felt this peace come over me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was like, that's God. I know like I'm supposed to go to Vegas, (laughs) apparently. So not very uh, often that you hear God telling people to go to Vegas. So (laughs) (laughs) well, mine was for different. Mine wasn't for vacation and partying. Mine was actually to start a business. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yes it was very strange and I just but I never felt like that before and I was like I feel like that's God moving me telling me take the leap and go 100 percent. so I did so my one question was when you started working at new fit did you so you had this crossfit injury did you were you able to rehab yourself with the machine like did you I didn't come to them then Okay. So I didn't know about new fit when I injured myself with and CrossFit. It feels was, on its own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I ended up having to go to a chiropractor and like getting stuff to stuff work with them before I found out about new fit. Sure. So, um, but yes, now knowing what I know, it can help with SI joint injuries, sure. um, sciatic stuff like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious what you, like, what is it popular for? What is the, what are the limitations? And just kind of, I was trying to tell my PT about it and she was thinking it was comparable to Russian stem or is it similar to that? Okay. All right. So, um, well, you know what we didn't talk about was, um, you getting your pro card <laughs> just kind of glazed right over that. Um, so if you want to share, I mean, if you want to share that moment, I mean, um, was it a grueling prep? Um, one of the you things- know, that prep was the f- most fun prep I think I've ever had. Okay. It was in the right spot. Mm-hmm. I felt so much positivity around it. Yeah. Um, I just had a great feeling the entire prep, you know, John was always like, you know, checking in on how you're feeling mentally. And I was like, I'm good. I mean, I'm a little bit tired, but I'm good. Like I'm in a good headspace. Like I just felt, I felt ready. Like, yeah, I felt like it was my time. My entire prep was so strange. I've never felt like that throughout an entire prep, but it's just a really, really good feeling. This works for you. That's awesome. Yeah. I, he got to be there, which is pretty unusual yeah. for a coach. So that. Yeah. So- Pretty and because I'd been with him for so long, mm-hmm. like I got choked up um, when he came out into the lobby. Um, yeah. Renee actually got it on video, and I saw him for the first time after I'd walked off stage and won. Yeah, and uh, he kind of got choked up too. <laughs> but I mean, it's just you create a friendship, and I—I I mean, I don't know. I know John as a friend too, outside of being a coach. Like yeah. he's a friend, so it's. And yeah. that's been created with coaching. So, and I know not all coaches get like that with their clients, but because I lived in San Antonio and he was there, it was a little bit easier for that to become a friendship too. Yeah. And so it was really, really cool. It was a really cool moment. I'm glad he could be there and he got to, to witness me getting my yeah. pro card. In the that whole relationship just come together. I think that's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Because he took me from, and we, I just sent him, a comparison shot too from what I was like battling with these this hormonal issue yeah. and stuff like he brought me out of that and where I started when I was with him to where I am now I was like who'd have thought in five years like I could do what I did 
I mean, the pictures like are just insane. Yeah. But you know, what's funny is that, I mean, five years is five years of committed work, you know, is, um, I mean, if you told that to somebody, they would think that's a long time, you know, to be putting towards a goal. Yep. Um, but it's really, I mean, it's really not. I, most of us that have any significant amount of muscle have put in at least five years from where we started to where it actually shows up, you know? And I mean, that's just with John. So, I mean, physically in the gym, because yeah. I've been competing for eight years, I think. Yeah, yeah. I started. 2012 yeah so I mean it's consistency in the gym eight or nine years so it's it's a long road but pays off what is your your training looked like now are you like what's your split look like now um and has he always written training programs for you or have you always done my training yeah Yeah. uh which has helped tremendously too because he knows where I'm at in my training protocol. And yeah. every, after every show, he kind of rewrote what, where, based on judges' feedback. Yeah, where you needed to grow. First, right, it was first um, glutes and hands and back. Like I was hitting legs like three times a, a week. And then <laughs> with back, it was like twice a week and we added in shoulders, you know, with some date, with some of the back days and stuff, it was, it was really interesting. My splits have been different from every single prep. Yeah. I've done like a 10 day split, which was really weird. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Different body, but it's a 10 day. So it's in rotation every 10 yeah. days. And it's, and I've done five day splits. I've done, you know, <laughs> just look back on all my training and I'm just like, I can't believe how many different ways I have trained. And okay. How many, how many arm days? <laughs> Isn't it funny though, when you think about that, like, and like some people just want to grow their arms. <laughs> you know? Never have I ever though had an arm day. He always throws them in with something. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But right now my, my split, and it's been like this for about a year, um, has been just an upper, lower Mm-hmm. off upper lower off so I'm yeah. training four days out of the week three days off so your upper for days a while are- it was upper lower off upper lower off off I had three days off Whoa. yeah Did they have it rotated sometimes four days depending on the week because of the seven day week I got you I got you so your upper days are probably like one is more back dominant and the other is right. more shoulder so dominant. in Right. In those days, I have two workouts. I switch between an upper day that's more back dominated and an upper day that's more shoulder dominated. But yeah. I still hit back and shoulders every upper. It's just one's more sure. dominant yeah, than the other. The exercise. And then leg days, I have two. One's more quad focused. One's more ham and glute focused. Yeah. So, yeah, just trying to get the overall growth. Yep. I so. think we should- we think we've achieved it. I'm really, really anxious to get back on stage. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we were talking about, okay, so you moved, um, you moved and how were things, ooh, I think you guys, how were things during the pandemic for you? It was difficult because I had moved in 2019, started my business and was doing fairly well. Um, had like some a decent amount of clients and some consistent, some not, but I was getting them here and there. Yeah. Um, and then the shutdown happened in March and I lost almost all my clients except one. Yeah. Because it's not that I couldn't work because technically I could have been deemed medical. Sure. Healthcare yeah. Because of the lab portion of it. Yeah. Uh, it was my clients lost their jobs so they couldn't afford me. Yeah. Because when everything closed, like I had to, you know, bartenders, that kind of stuff. And it's, it, I mean, it was all the hospitality industry. And yeah. when they all lose their jobs, because the whole strip shuts down. Yeah. I'm one of the first things to go. Yeah. Oh, it is. I mean, and it's funny because through all of this, it's almost like they were pushing like, well, let's get rid of all things that are self-care, even though everyone's going to be losing their minds and mental, like health-wise, just 
everything's going to be going to crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. But let's shut down the gyms. You can't get massages. You can't go to the chiropractor. Oh. You can't. It was the decisions of all this was pretty well. And it's kind of, you know, I hate to get all political on it, but it's kind of the American way, you know, people, it, it's like medicine Let's prescribe medicine rather than tell people, you know, how to get healthy or promote yeah. it, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The step prior, the steps prior to obesity and heart disease. Yeah. <laughs> and not- knock on wood, like I haven't gotten COVID. Oh, oh yeah. Stayed healthy through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I'm especially now. So through the shutdown, I had lost clients. I had one guy that stayed on. I was going up doing rehab once a week, but once a week is not much. It's not enough to pay my bills. So right. I lived off my savings. Um, luckily I had some. Yeah. And then they finally in, let self-employed claim unemployment and that helped. Okay. Um, but I didn't get that paid because Nevada had so many issues with that until like the middle of July. Okay. And I know some people still haven't even gotten paid their unemployment. Yeah. They're still, I'm like, I don't know how they're doing. I don't know how they're managing. It's crazy because Nevada's unemployment system is just insane. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I, but, was, um, I was super grateful to be having, you know, ha- that's why I'm thankful that I have a regular normal job as well. Um, but I was still cleaning. So I, I mean, everything still needed to be cleaned actually more, even more so probably not. It was, yeah, my work actually picked up and I was super busy, which I was thankful for because I probably would have lost my mind if I was just sitting around doing nothing. It did but, start to get to you. Yeah. Um, it, it got to a couple of my friends, it, they just, it was affecting them mentally. It was right before we reopened, which I'm glad we did when we did, because I would have hate if we hadn't, I think a couple of my friends would not have been able to handle it much yeah. more. I, I know almost everyone I talked to at some point during the pandemic had, you know, a couple of days or a week where they just were like, I just, I didn't get out of bed. I couldn't get out of bed. Just like a super, like I had the same one where I just, I, my ex was coming by, you know, to pick up Anna. And so we were just back and forth between the two houses. And I just, even though I was working, I was just like, this is not living. And I hate it. I hate it so much. And, you know, we didn't have the gym, which is the only other thing I do besides church. (laughs) Yep. Same here. You know, me and my, my good friend, Stacy, that's here. She's a bikini pro. And uh, we were the same way. It was church and the gym were our things. Like that was our social life, <laughs> sadly. But I mean, when then you take away the gym and you take away church, it's like, dang, now I got to watch church online. I got to work out at home. It's like, yeah, where's the social aspect, aspect of everything, you know? It's such a step back too, because I think a lot of us started out with working out. Like I, I started out working out at home, you know, a little like dumbbell, like arm stuff. Yeah. And, you know, um, I remember I started with Jillian Michaels videos <laughs> way back in the day. Well, I did the Jane Fonda workouts and I would rent VHS tapes from the library, you know, oh she had like gosh, the, the, the unitards, you know, that was like the band is like almost right below your boobs. And it was like pulled up to, you know, That's funny. Yeah, it is funny that, but yeah, but there's always that desire to want to try to, you know, change your body and to get healthier. And, you know, for me, it was always a struggle with trying to lose body fat. And I, um, you know, it's funny the ways we, we fall into the trends or what's available and it's, you know. I've battled with my weight my entire life. So I do not have good genetics at (laughs) If people always say I must have good genetics. I'm like, if you knew, if you saw the families I come from, you would know well, I well, you, genetics on my side. You might have the genetics for muscle building though. Cause I feel like you Absolutely. either have, cause either you, you struggle like heck to lose body fat and you can build muscle pretty easily, or you struggle like crazy to build muscle but you have like your abs all the time, but you're I like, don't have my abs. <laughs> no, no. And I they just go away about two weeks after I step off the stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I'm like, man, those are the first to go. <laughs> I think that, um, well, and that was another reason I got into bodybuilding too, was because, um, I was, you know, I, I was allowing myself to eat. And if I would eat more than what I was supposed to, I'd just go to the gym and like, oh my gosh, if I eat, it actually just turns into muscle. Like, this is crazy, you know? Such a misconception, right? Yeah. So yeah, it was, yeah. It same for me though. It has been a struggle. I just, I like, I like food and I think that's my, you know, my crutch because I was more of a, you know, I've always cycled between like, you know, I was a cigarette smoker for a long time. And then I, I drank a couple of years, different times in my life. So I've always been like, have this sort of addictive personality and I needed to have something. So I think when the pandemic hit, it was like, you cannot take away my healthy vice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, yeah. Yeah. So, so you, um, you were training at home during. I was, so I actually tried to start prep last year. Okay. I was in prep started mid January because we were going to do a show in July. Okay. Oh, this year or this year. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like last year, we don't even know practice. what. <laughs> Yes, this year. You're like, can we just pretend 2020 never happened? Can we just pretend we're already in 2021? Can this year just be over already, please? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, mm. anyways, but yes, this year. So I started prep in January and I was going to do my pro debut at the LA Pro in okay. July. And then we we're going to do Tampa and see kind of after that what happened or where I was placing and go from there. If I wasn't placing while well, we were just going to drop back into off season and to build more. Okay. So um, I had started prep and then when the shutdown happened, I was working out at home. I was using the newbie and then bands, you know, John had sent me an at-home workout. He just created um, using bands and he's like, you can get a decent, he's like, right now he's like, all I want you to do is hold on to your muscle. Yeah. <laughs> like if we can maintain, that's great. He's like, I just don't want you to lose any of your muscle. He's like, and then when gyms reopened, because we thought it was just, just, just going to be for two weeks. Oh, I know, right? You know, of course, everyone did. Here we are. Nine, nine months, months later. later. <laughs> it's been nine. Yeah. For us, it was nine. We, our gyms opened right at the beginning of September, I think. And we closed. Wow. Our gyms opened at the beginning of June. Yeah, no. <laughs> but so we were supposed to obviously only be shut down two weeks. So he's like, we can just do this. If we can just maintain your muscle, it'll be good. And then get back in the gym when they open. Okay. Well, a month in John's like, all right, let's just bring you back up to maintenance level and reassess when gyms open. He's like, I don't want you to lose any muscle. He's like, you work too hard. You know, I just, he's like, this is not an ideal situation to be training for a pro debut. You know, you need access to equipment and you want to bring your best look. He's like, I'm just not comfortable with you using home workouts because I didn't have access I know some people had access to like regular gym equipment at home well I live in an apartment complex so I don't have a garage to have a garage gym at and I had my newbie and that's it and then my friend Stacy had a couple like hand weights and stuff but it wasn't anything heavy enough to make a difference so right, right. we just popped back into maintenance and once gyms were open obviously I had lost some strength and I noticed because of my long book, but it came back fairly quickly about two to three weeks and my strength was back. Yeah. Um, but at that time he assessed my picks and he was like, you're about 18 weeks out. Okay. So we looked at that and he was like, I had like three figure shows to choose from at that point because of shows that canceled shows that rescheduled, yeah. you know, and I was just like, I don't want to do a show because I'm forced to do a show and only be able to do one show. And then it was going to be in October and then I'm going to have to reverse over the holidays only to jump right back into prep in January to try to do a show in 2021. Yeah. It just didn't make sense. It sounded to me like I was setting myself up for a metabolic disaster and yeah. he agreed because I wasn't going to give myself enough time to come off of prep to recover, to get back into prep yeah. wanting to eat more in 2021. Well, so and we tried to stay out for 2020. Well and knowing you, it had this happen before with a, you know, just the setback of your body, just not wanting to start back up again. So right. I mean, yeah. 
certain people, it's funny because yeah, if you have access to that stuff and you know, you can keep going, it would have been a great year to compete just because a lot, I mean, if you wanted to place well, because a lot of people, I think were not able to. Oh yeah. The shows were a lot smaller this year. Yeah. (laughs) A lot smaller. Yeah. Even the national shows. I mean, look at Miami is usually the largest show. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. In the class, all classes. And it was small this year. Yeah. I was shocked at like the class sizes. I mean, there's still a decent amount, but I was still very, very surprised at how little it was. Yeah. Well, and it, it is, it's just funny how many people were actually, I don't know, like I, kudos to them because you had to be super dedicated. I did not, yeah. mentally, I was not there. I, to yeah. me, I, I just kind of resolved it. Like, you know what? I've taken long chunks of time off before where I've just been to the gym once or twice a week and maintained. And I just thought, you know what? Hopefully this will be, um, you know, a couple steps back to do leaps forward rather than trying to push for, unknown, you know, and then there were other people's shows kept getting, I mean, you know, you had this with like Renee had this, um, yeah. Ashley had this, um, you know, Jamie, um, you know, Jamie from that elevated podcast. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she, she ended up, I think not really even competing at where she was going to, because the shows kept getting moved and canceled. I just, I a girl here that bless her heart. She was doing her pro debut. She was two weeks out and the show got moved and she literally, I mean, had gone through her whole entire prep. And she couldn't compete because her job wouldn't let her travel. And it was supposed to be here in Vegas and it moved to Arizona because of our restrictions. Yeah, you just. I'm just like, I couldn't (laughs) take that chance. (laughs) Doing a prep and putting yourself through all of that to not compete. Like, I'd be devastated. And it's like, I did, it was a waste. Yeah. And like, so no, it, if it's easier, like you said, I think your body, you know, it has the potential to fight more, you know, if somebody doesn't have that problem, then it's not as risky. I don't know. I mean, I know prep is easier for some people than for other people. Oh I yeah. Personally... 100%. It's not yeah. easy for me. <laughs> I always take forever to lose. Like in the beginning, it's so slow. And John knows this yeah. now. It's just a habit. It's so slow for me to see change. Yeah. But then it, it starts picking up, but it's just like, yeah. but now that I've been, I've never been off for two years though. So I might respond really quick this time when we go into prep, I have no idea. Let's hope that would be really, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm like, I'm like a pound. It doesn't matter what I, what I do. I'm like a pound a week. And then the week of my period, it's like nothing. So I have to know that I'm having one week that nothing's absolutely happening. <laughs> And then, and then as you get further in, it's like, Ooh, 0.4 pounds this week. Like, you know, it's just like, so I'm like, this is not worth it when I can eat like 2,500 calories, 3000 calories and be kind of fat. Like, okay. (laughs) Well, speaking of like the scale and weight and stuff, I think it's a big misconception. Like for women, especially like to pay so much attention to the scale. Yeah. And I have been privy to that myself. I'm by no means saying that I've never had that before. Cause I have focused way too much on the scale. John sure. knows this. he can yeah. attest to it, Are you, but seeing myself taking the pictures like helps so much because I had this, this number in my head that I think looking back, I had some emotional abuse at that number when yeah. I was that number way long time ago. Yeah. And I would get anxiety whenever I'd see that number or get close to that number on the scale. Yeah. And I look so much different at that number now sure. than I did previously because I'm leaner and I have more muscle now sure. than I was when I was didn't have as much muscle and had a lot more fat. Yeah. So it's just, it's all about the composition of your body and how much muscle versus fat you have. You could look completely different at 160 with more muscle than you do with less. And yeah, that's why I just strive to tell people like take progress pics, like me- measurements to like, don't yeah. just go on the scale. Cause you could stay the same weight, but yeah. be recomping your whole body. 
which I actually did last year. It was interesting. My weight hardly fluctuated, but you look at my pictures and you could see complete, I just completely recomped. Yeah. Like I got cleaner and harder and I was staying the same weight. It was kind of cool to see, but. I think that especially, I mean, I get this a lot with new clients. They won't lose weight on this. You know, some people will lose a lot of weight really quickly and other people, um, you know, and I think maybe they're, maybe they know how to train better. So they're training more intensely than someone who is, you know, newer. So they're getting more activation and they're actually recruiting muscle fibers. Like they would be like somebody who's a little bit more seasoned and you get, you know, <laughs> the scale, not changing four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, but you do side by side pictures and you're like, look at this. You look like you lost 10 pounds, you know? Right. So, but yeah, I think you're, you're 100% true about that, that women need to focus in less on the scale. And one of the things I was thinking of when you said that is like, I, cause I grew up in the, you know, it was like in the nineties was when I first started, um, you know, trying to get lose weight and everything. And I know what I weighed for every important event in my life, because, you know, it's so scale focused, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, that was at so-and-so's baptism. I weighed 108 pounds then, or whatever it was, you know what I mean? Like you just always knew because you knew an event was coming up and you wanted to be, you know, you were focused on losing weight for that event. So it just pains me and it breaks my heart when women focus so much on that number and then they're stuck and they're like, oh, I'm miserable. I hate the way I look. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like you're about 10 weeks out from a show. Yeah. <laughs> you're pretty lean. Yeah. Well, like, I think people heads. associate numbers with happiness too. I, I mean, I get that a ton with clients because uh, they remember, you know, when they were 118 pounds, they were really happy. So if I was 100, if I could just be 118 pounds, I'll be happy again. It's yeah. like, why you think about why were you happy and why are you unhappy now? So, right. but you know, I, I have to work. I mean, I still work on that stuff for myself too, right. with, you know, John's helped me a lot and he's like, I'm yeah. going to help you like push that number more and more. Cause he, and I'm not going to say the number, but he, he's just like knowing you're going to completely change every single time you approach that number. Yeah. Cause I'm around it right now and I'll be coming down but next off season, I'm, I'm going to be approaching it again. And yeah. it's always going to be a mental block. Yeah. What is your, um, what's your, what has your stage weights been? <laughs> um, so my first, Oh, and how, wait, how tall are you? Five, six. Okay. Well, five, five and three fourths. <laughs> was my I'm high chart. I'm five, four and three quarters too. I always say five, five, but <laughs> so I just round up now. I'm like it's five, six, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. So stage, um, competition weights. Um, do you remember? Varied. So like my first one, my first national show, I think my first figure show, I was like 132 or 133. Okay. And then my first national show, I think I was 137. Okay. And then my next national show, I was like 143. Oh, wow. So it's like about five pounds each show I've been up on stage weight. Okay. Um, which is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I say three to five pounds. Cause I remember John and I were looking one time and it was three pounds. I don't remember. It might've been between a regional and a national show, yeah. but I'm interested to see after two years off what my stage weight will be. Yeah. A little bit more than that. Cause I'd like to think I gained a little bit more muscle than that, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so what are you looking at then competing wise? Do you know for next year? Mm-hmm. You're not You're probably the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Um, I start prep in the middle of January. And we're going to go for the Orlando Europa. Oh, nice. That's a great show. So we, we decided to play it safe and do a Florida show. <laughs> right. Since everything, that's really smart. That's really smart. I was like, I'm, I don't care. I'll travel. I know it sucks because the time difference between Vegas and Florida is horrible, but I'll make it work. I'll just get there earlier. Yeah. But 
it's just, I'm, I'm like, I'm not even going to take a chance this year. I'm going to get back on that stage. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really smart, though, to think about places that, you know, because obviously the Olympia is being held there, too. So they're just, they're just ready to have things get back to well, the governor has vowed not to close that state back down. So, yeah. Yeah, I wish some of the other states would also follow suit. <laughs> I know. Now I'm just worrying about our gym closing back down here. I'm praying that doesn't happen. Well, and I have clients that are ready to sign up in January too, but I know some of them are out in California. And so it's a matter of, are you going to be, you know, people have had opportunities to get home equipment <laughs> at this yeah. point. Man, the prices on some of that stuff. Ooh. I saw that Christina had those, um, what are the dumbbells that are like, um, the adjustable weight dumbbells. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're normally like $500 and one was like $1,500. Um, yeah. During, during the pandemic, people were selling them on eBay. Yeah. Oh, the power block. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not a new fit. Cause they take up so much less space than all these dumbbells. Yeah. So just do that and you can adjust the weight. They work just the same. Yeah. People I know. think it looks silly, but Hey, it works. I don't care how it looks. <laughs> Well, and who has room for a whole dumbbell rack and the cost? I mean, the cost of all those, you know, they're like two and a half dollars a pound or something. So now it used to just be a dollar a pound. I know <laughs> that all that, all the price of all that stuff went up. And yeah. well, I won't go there, but yeah. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was going to say just like guns and ammo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm a Texas girl. I yeah. grew up around it. So <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. And toilet paper, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Whatever's in demand has like skyrocketed price. It's just like, okay. Yeah. I saw bottles of Lysol on Amazon that were like, it was like 20 bucks for, no, 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 no. It was like $110 for a bottle of Lysol when the Lysol bottles were all gone. It was great. <laughs> yeah. The toilet paper thing was so stupid because so the Monday, so Monday before the Friday, before like toilet paper sold out, I was like making my grocery list for the week. And I was like, oh, I should have gotten toilet paper. Cause we had like two rolls of toilet paper left in the house. And like, so I'm like, oh, I'll just do it on Friday when I go get groceries. And I go, I ended up going to five places trying to find toilet paper. I didn't even and I wasn't super paying attention to what was going on in the world. So I just was like, is this because of this pandemic? Like this, this is like, what's no sense. I don't know why that was the first no. to go. No. It wasn't a stomach bug <laughs> or intestinal bug. It was like, why on earth was toilet paper the first to go? Yeah. And it, it reminds me of, um, I don't know if you've seen this. Um, there was a, it was like a, so I follow this page on Instagram. It's called you look like a man and they repost these <laughs> basically when, when guys will troll girls accounts and like some of the stuff that they say, but there was this girl's doing a TikTok where she's talking about how, uh, when the first time they sent a woman into space, it was for six days and they sent her with a hundred tampons. <laughs> Like you have rocket scientists and they don't know how many tampons a woman goes through or if she's going to even need them. And that's I was not, if it's around that time. If it's not around that time, she's not even going to use one. I know. But that's what it reminded me of because I'm like, you see these people with like 12 packs of toilet paper and there's like eight of them in their cart. And you're like, do you, can you do math? Because yeah. How much toilet paper do you need? Seriously. <laughs> so we were gonna, we didn't get to talk about, let's talk about new fit a little bit. So can you kind of explain the science behind that? And um, yeah, like what do you have most people use it for? Um, oh, and I just wanted to say, we had talked about this briefly before, but I did want to give you credit for it because so when, when John had, John had injured himself, I think he was kind of um, showing him using the machine with you on his Instagram story. 
And when I asked him about it, because he tore his um, his rectum, right? I had a light tear in his rectum. And um, yeah, and you were like, he was like, no, this is like, you should get in touch with Carlin. And I did actually call you. I had actually I considered, that. yeah, flying out there to work on my, um, I had a torn meniscus, I think it was. Um, but then you hooked up John and Renee. They ended up buying one of the machines. Renee got certified to use it, I believe. I don't even know mm -hmm. if they um, actually train people or if they just help their clients. Um, I think they just use it for themselves now. I don't think okay. John trains anyone with it. Okay. Unless some of his, unless someone comes in and wants to use it, he might. But yeah. And then, um, and then Stephanie um, used to be Roe. Brad Rose, ex-wife now, um, she had a tragic accident um, in the gym and tore both of her, both rectums, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys shipped a machine out there. So anyways, but you kind of were the, like the epicenter <laughs> of starting this all. <laughs> yeah, when I got on there, they were starting to expand and because I was in bodybuilding, I kind of knew some people and yeah, when I got in touch and I helped Rich get in touch with the right people, it just kind of took off. You know, when John had injured his leg, I like within 24 hours, I was like, you need to get on the machine. Like you need to come up to Austin, like tomorrow, like yeah. <laughs> ASAP. And, and he was. Like, oh. Yeah. And um, it helps because the quicker you can get access to the injury you can get it to get the machine on it yeah the faster we can stop what's happening essentially the tear you know we had brad Rowe at um it was at destination dallas now this was after i think it was after we had sent one out to him but he had popped his bicep flipping a tire oh that's right or moving a tire i think he moved a tire it wasn't yeah and yeah it up to help move it around and his bicep popped we had that machine on him in like within five minutes of it popping and prevented it from rolling up okay and the doctor said that that was the healthiest he's ever seen a tendon when he reconnected wow and he he actually competed like five weeks later or something like that didn't he it wasn't five weeks but it was unheard of like yeah that yeah. he totally healed like during a prep or whatever. Right. So, so how does it, how does it work? Is it, this is like, um, so I'm kind of curious, I was getting some dry needling done and is it very similar where, is it similar where it is creating a, I'm like touching my arm as if I'm doing this. I do it all the time. <laughs> um, what are, what is it doing? Like recreating neural pathways, recreating damage so that the body heals itself. How does, how does the new fit actually work? So on the rehab side, um, yeah. it, your body is in a fight or flight response when you're injured. So okay. you want to get it out of that fight or flight response. Okay. Um, and it's protecting that injury. So you shut down signal to that area. Well, the newbie, when we search and we scan the area and it could be, you know, bilateral to the area too, or, you know, opposing body, opposing muscle as well. That's overcompensating too. You just never know. Yeah. Um, we search and when the, we can find actual spots on the body where your neurological signal has been shut down just on feedback from you in the machine yeah. and those areas that are shut down, we put electrodes over and it's like, think of it like a garden hose. So if your nerve pathways are folded like a garden hose and they're kinked, yep. which means we shut down signal. Once we put the electrode there, it's like opening up that water hose. So it's like letting the nerves flow through there again. Okay. Um, it's retraining, it's reprogramming your brain to send that signal again. It's retraining the mind muscle connection. It sends okay. the same signal that your brain sends to your muscles. We could just amplify that signal and send it stronger. Okay. So your brain sends it at about two pulses per second. The machine can send it anywhere from one to 500 pulses per second. Oh, wow. 
So yeah, so 500 is where we use it for rehab, 500 pulses per second. So it's so much current that your body thinks it's doing more work than it normally is or than it actually is. And you're just reprogramming that connection and that mind muscle connection and helping the body move properly again. Okay. Without, and, and the thing is, as well. So you can um, use it for training also because it, um, it creates this illusion of weight without any um, wear and tear on the joints, right? Like that's. Correct. So anywhere you place the electrodes during training, you're getting close to 100% muscle fiber recruitment on your own, just training in the gym without any stem or anything. You're getting like Five. 40. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> the average, average person is 40. Some higher athletes might push it and get 50 to 60 if they're lucky. Okay. But usually the average is about four, 30 to 40% okay. of your muscle okay. fibers like you recruit. Okay. So when you train with this, you're getting close to hundred percent muscle fiber recruitment. So you're, you're getting so much more muscle fiber recruitment. The soreness after you train with it is so deep. Like it's not like a soreness after you train yourself at the gym where you feel like if you stretch, you could kind of stretch the soreness away. Right. No, this is like a deep soreness. Like you're sore for days after. So because there's so there's that you know, you're, you're training with more fibers. Sure. You do use less weight because of your, your motor unit recruitment is stronger. Yeah. I, I know I had seen some interviews that Brad had done and he said that he was just almost solely training with the newbie now. Um, he does. Yeah. Which is like healing for the body. You can grow. And again, you're not getting the the repetition movement on your joints away. Yeah, you can train less with less weight and still get a better workout. Yeah. So people with knee problems like or hip injuries or shoulder issues, like it's so much easier and better for them to train with it yeah. because they can get still the same amount of muscles, the stimulus that is created through training with less weight. Yeah. That's crazy. So cool. So you're busy again. Is it, are you re out of your own place or are you, were you traveling with the machine? So I'm mobile. I don't have like a, a studio or anything that I train out of. Yeah. Um, I do have a gym here. Actually, I don't have any training clients right now. It's all rehab, yeah. um, which is fine with, I actually prefer that, but the, the machine has also been approved for, um, helping people with MS and I have two MS clients right now. And, um, it's, it's interesting because the guy that I have been seeing since like the end of August, he's a doctor himself. Um, he has MS and he's been able to do for the past, I think two weeks, two and a half weeks, he's been able to do a bicep curl on his own with his arm that he couldn't move. So that's been pretty cool. That's really awesome. It's, it's funny. Cause I think about that. My dad has Parkinson's and he's not really part of the side effects of that is that you have depression and he's not really motivated to exercise or anything. And my mom used to say, um, so she re retired just before the pandemic and he would be home and he would ride his bike like an exercise for about 15 minutes. And she said the days that he rode his bike for 15 minutes, she could tell a difference in his. Oh, wow physical function and everything else. But now it's been really hard to just get him to move around. And it's funny how quickly the muscles atrophy as you get older. And especially if you don't use them, it yeah. takes so little for that muscle to come back. You know, like I said, like 15 minutes on the bike or, you know, 10 stand up, sit down, squats, body weight, you know what I mean? So it takes very little, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, that's so, that's so cool. Like super rewarding. Like, I think you said much more, um, you know, when people get into training, a lot of times they want to work with athletes, but, um, having something like you're like a miracle worker, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could work miracles a little faster sometimes. <laughs> 
So but it, it's a pathway. <laughs> is it so is it covered by people's insurances or is this more of a um, massage and um, that type of a thing where people have to pay um, out? Some it can be coded for insurance. Okay. Um, I would have ha I would have to be out of a practitioner's office, so like a chiropractor or PT or a doctor's office, because they have to have a license to accept insurance. And yeah. obviously I don't have a license. So, so where else um, are you located? What was that? <laughs> what was the last thing you said? No, I was saying, so obviously I can't accept insurance. I'm only cash pay, but some of the people that have it, you can code it for insurance. I was wondering where else, are there any other locations now besides Austin? And, um, you know, I know Brad is individual, but, um, and so are you. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm individual too. Yeah. Um, I'm not really, they sell you the machine and you're kind of on your own. Okay. So it's not a franchise or anything like that. Um, there's quite a few, if you go to neu.fit, new.fit. Yeah. Um, you can find a list of locations and there's, they're all over the U S okay. there's a lot. And it, a lot of them are like physical therapists or chiropractors who have added it to their practice. Yeah. Um, there's very few who just do it on the training side. Um, but yeah, there's, um, that were there everywhere. I'll have to take a look. Well, science is cool. <laughs> I know. Right. And I feel like the machine just is, I don't even feel like we've fully tapped into the potential of it. You sure. Know? So what else can you do? Like, um, does it have to be surface or like, can you do psoas type stuff or? Oh yeah, you can do psoas for sure. Yeah. Yep. So how long, exactly. how long does it like last? Uh, if you, you know what I mean? Like, um, I know, I remember John was saying something, I think he did some stuff with Christina cause she has, I think Christina has hypermobile joints like I do. And so she has like more shoulder issues. And I think, um, I'm just curious if you can retrain those neural pathways, is it, does it stay that way? Or do you have to, um, do the application again at some point? It should stay. You know, I mean, it's not going to happen in one session, right? Usually, it, and that is what kind of varies. It depends on your body's response and how your body adapts to it. Sure. But um, the quicker you can get to an injury, yeah, the faster we can get it to heal, I which is you. better. But it's like if I get to someone who's had an injury for ten to twelve years, well, it's not going to be an easy five session fix. It might take ten to twelve or more sessions, just depending on how your body responds. Cause sure. it's been in that fight or flight response for so long with that injury for so long that it's, it's hard. The body's stubborn too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So chronic injuries are going to, yeah, require yeah. More sessions, but. We'll but like just training with it. I mean, you see the benefit and I've told clients this before, when I even do a demo on them, you know, like you'll notice like the next time, like say it was glutes, the next time you train glutes on your own, you're going to realize you have a stronger mind muscle connection to your glutes just by doing one session with a new fit because we're reprogramming mind muscle connection as you train. Yeah. So yeah. And if you're, if you're very in tune with your body, you're not going to lose that. It might diminish and get, I mean, if you do, I mean, whatever you don't train, you lose. Right. So right. right. That's it's it's work in and of itself it's work with the athlete itself continuing to focus on the mind muscle connection to right. outside if of the training created and then you're doing that practice to reestablish. Right. yeah so that's really cool very cool so well i think that's um i think we covered all the things we wanted to cover so i'm really excited about your Prep, are you excited about getting started? <laughs> so excited, you have no idea. <laughs> I feel like it's never going to happen, and I shouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, no, oh my God, I I just so say, long. you picked the right no. thing, so it'll be, it'll be good. When is that, is that in June? When is the? July, it's right over July 4th weekend, it's July 2nd and 3rd. Right, right. It's actually... July 3rd is my dad's birthday. <laughs> Aww. They're going to try to come see it. So that'll be fun. 
Yeah, that'll be good. Is it tough? Do you have a sister too, right? Do you have a no, sister? brother. Brother. Is your family all in Texas? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You just blazing trails, all kinds. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> So, well, that's awesome. Well, we'll have to have you back on again, maybe when you're in the depths of prep or. Yeah. <laughs> Just ask me how I'm doing, how I'm feeling this prep versus last, because it was so smooth last time. <laughs> yeah. I think after having such a long break, I think your body is like, as much as you're itching to go, I think you're going to be good. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I would think so. By God's will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that you're so open about your faith. Oh, for sure. I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for him. So not ashamed of that at all. Ah, well, before you make me cry. <laughs> so it, that's something I admire. There's a lot of um, women in the industry that are very open about their faith. And it, it just, it makes me really proud to be a Christian. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So you and Christina, Michaela, I love Michaela. Michaela yeah. Chuck. Yeah. So I know of her. I've never met her. I haven't, I've never met her either, but she is a, she's a beautiful person. Like a lot of you. <laughs> yes. So, all right. Well, um, I guess we'll, um, we'll look forward to having you on again sometime, but I think yes, that's, thank that's, you so much for the invite. I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm glad it worked. I'm glad it worked out. Um, I'm glad it worked out. So I hope business picks up for you as well. Thank you. And your state doesn't shut down. Thank you. Yes. Likewise for you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. So, all right, well, we will talk to you soon. I hope you have a really great day. Thank you. You as well. Thanks. Bye, Carlin. Bye.